Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over arrays in C++. So by the end of this video, you will learn how to create an array, add elements to it, and understand how an array works in memory. So let's say you have multiple elements that you want to create. And let's say you're eating at a restaurant, and sometimes the restaurant might ask you if you want to pay tips. You get three options, and that is 12, 15, and 18%. So in this case, we have three variables. And let's say there were more options, maybe a fourth option or a fifth option. So instead of creating many variables with numbers at the end like I did here, we can create an array to store these numbers. So to create an array, we need to declare two things, the type of the elements being stored in the array. And we need to give a name. So I'm going to create a variable. And usually when you're naming your variables for arrays, it's usually something that's plural. So we have tip options, and then you need to add square brackets. And within the square brackets, we declare the size of the array. So in this case, I have three options, so I'm going to make it size three. So an array is basically a contiguous block of memory. So what I just did was I've allocated three blocks of memory to hold three integers. So now I have my array, but there's nothing in the array. So I need to put these values, 12, 15, and 18, inside the array. So to do so, I need to do tip options. And within square brackets, I need to indicate the position or index of the array. So index starts at 0. So 0 would be where the first number is. And I'm going to put 12. And you might be wondering why it starts at 0 instead of 1 because it is the first number, why does it start at zero? And later I will explain why that is, and it has to do with the structure of the array in memory. So I can do the same and type tip options one, and this will be the second index or second position. So the second number would be 15. And then I can do tip options index two, which is the third number, and that would be 18. So how do I see the values in my array? You might be thinking I would do C out, tip options, end line, and let's run our code and see what happens. And as you can see, we get this weird number here, and this is actually in hexadecimal, and this represents the memory address of our array. So if I run our code again, you can see the number is different. So every time we run our code, we allocate memory in a different location so how do I see the values of my array? Well, I'd have to indicate which position or which index I want to see the value at. So here I would do index of zero and let's save and run our program. And you can see at index zero, we have 12. And I can do the same, let's copy and paste and check index one and two and let's save and run our program. You can see we got 12, 15, 18. So here we are creating an array, and over here we are assigning values to our array. So this is called setter, and when we want to access a value at a specific index, this is called the getter. Okay, so set and get. So another thing we can do with arrays is instead of assigning each individual value like so, we can initialize our array. So to initialize your array, you would assign it as if it were a variable. So you would do equal sign, and then you would list out the values. So using the curly braces, you would put in the values separated by commas. So I would do 12, 15, and 18. So let's get rid of this. And then now if I run our program, you can see we got 12, 15, and 18. And actually, when you do it like this, C++ is smart enough so that you actually don't have to declare the size. When we declare our array with three elements, C++ will know that this is an array of size three. So if I hover over it, you can see array of size three. And if I add another value, let's say 25, you can see that the array is now size four. Now there is a benefit of declaring the size of your array while you initialize it, for instance, like so, and that is because if I'm writing out my code and I accidentally add another number and save, you can see 
I will be warned saying that there are too many values because there should be only three values, but I have four. And if I try to run my code, you can see I'll get an error. Another thing that I cannot do is once I declare an array, I cannot create another one under the same name. So for instance, I cannot do this. Tip options five and write one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if I save and run a program, you can see we are going to get an error. And if I try to do this, assuming that tip options have has a size of three, I cannot assign it an array of three elements. So if I try to run this program, you can see I can't do this. I'll get an error, okay? So that is one of the rules in C++ for arrays. You cannot change the size once you declare it. And the second rule would be the type. You cannot change the type, just like how you cannot change the type of a variable. So over here, I've declared an array of type integer. So I cannot add a double in this array. So for instance, I cannot do 12.56. So when we run our program, you'll see that we get this error. However, if you remember my video on implicit type conversion, sometimes C++ can convert the types from one type to another. So in this case, let's say I put in the character A. This is obviously a character and not an integer, but if I run my program, you can see we get 65. And that is because C++ will convert this character A to its ASCII value. And I can do the same if I put a Boolean value true. If you remember, true evaluates to one. So if I run a program, you can see we get one over here, okay? Also, like with variables, you can also declare your arrays constant. So with variables, once you declare a variable constant, you cannot change the value assigned to it. The same applies for arrays. So if I try to do this and try to change the first value to 55, and I run my program, you can see I will get an error, and that is because this const declaration means this is read only. And declaring your array as constant can be helpful sometimes. For instance, you don't want to accidentally change a value in your array, and it's often used for arrays where you are not going to change the value, so something that is always going to be the same. So maybe for tip options, this may not be the best application because maybe when it's nighttime, you have a different set of numbers for tips. So one example where that would be useful is if you had a video game and you wanted to check for player keys, you can declare an array as constant and you can create an array of characters called directions. And it would basically be moving up would be W, moving left would be A, down would be S, and right would be D. Okay, so this is one example where you might want to declare your array as constant. And you can also declare arrays of type string. So you can do string, and let's say languages. And I want three languages. I can do English, Spanish, or Italian. And then maybe I can change one so that languages of two, index two, maybe Italian is not available, and I will switch to French. And I can do C out languages of two. And let's see what it is before. So let's format this a bit. And now we've run a program. We expect this to display Italian, and then after we update it, it will become French. So as you can see, we have Italian, and then after we update it, we get French. And one thing I want to mention is that arrays in C++ are not dynamic. So if you come from other programming languages, you might be familiar with lists in Python or arrays in JavaScript. These are not the same as arrays in C++. These are called dynamic arrays. And the equivalent of a Python list, JavaScript array, or a Java array list would be a vector in C++, okay? And these are called dynamic arrays because they resize, unlike an array in C++, where once we declare the size, we cannot change the size. In fact, the array is very low level, so there is no push or append operation, and there is no method for checking the size. So if you want to check the size of an array, you will need to do a little bit of math. So I'm going to do cout, 
size of tip options. And this is going to give me the size of this array. So if I run a program, you can see the size is 12. This is 12 bytes. And I can get the size of each individual element in the array. So if I do size of tip options of index zero, and I run our program, you can see we get 12 for the array and four for the first element. So to see how many elements are in our array, we would take the size of our array divided by the size of a single element within the array. And as you can see, we get three, okay? So 12 bytes divided by four bytes gives us three, which is the number of elements in our array. And not all elements are four bytes. In the case of integers, we have four bytes, but I can also have a short, which is basically a smaller integer. And you can see each element is actually two bytes. And I can also have a long, so if I change this to long, you can see each element is four bytes as well. And I can do long, long, which is a much bigger number. So as you can see, each element is eight bytes. So a long, long is a larger number than an integer. It can store more digits. And just for curiosity, if you want to know for characters, if I save and run a program here, you can see each character is one byte, okay? So now that you know how to create an array and how to update an array, the question is why does index start at zero? So this is the first number, second number, and third number. Why are the indices zero, one, and two? And so to figure out why that is the case, I'm going to print out our array. So if you remember, we get this number and that is the memory address of our array. And this is a hexadecimal number. And what I'm going to do now is copy and paste this. And I'm going to do tip options plus one and tip options plus two. And this might look weird to you because you might think that I'm adding a number to an array, but actually if I run a program, you can see we get more memory addresses. So what we're actually printing is the memory address for the array, or rather the starting address of the array. So the starting address starts at index zero. And when we do tip options plus one, and we print this out, we are printing out the memory address for the second element. So the second block of memory, which is index one. And then this one is the third block of memory, which is index two. So if you look at the numbers, you can see there's a difference of four every time. And that is because the size of each integer, each block is four bytes. So this is four, and then the next four will be eight, and then the next four will be 12. But because hexadecimal is 16 digits, we cannot write 10. So therefore, we have zero to nine in a decimal system. And in a hexadecimal system, after nine, we have A, which is 10, B, which is 11, and C, which is 12. So after zero to nine, we use the alphabet to denote the digits. And if I run the program, the memory addresses aren't always going to be the same, okay? So I'm going to take these values and use them as my example. So just to visualize this, I drew our stack memory and tip options. We have an array and it allocates three blocks of memory over here. So I only copy it over the last three digits because there's no point in copying the rest because they're all the same. And basically, when we want to find, for instance, the value at the second index, C++ needs to figure out where that memory address is. So to figure this out, there's a simple formula, and that is the target address is equal to starting address plus the index times size. So in this case, each individual size is four. And this is four bytes. So this is four bytes, this is another four bytes, and this is another four bytes, okay? So here is the offset, meaning how far from the starting address do we need to search? So 
index starts at zero because if I want to look for the first element or the zeroth element, if index is zero, then there's no offset. This is zero, right? Zero times anything gives us zero. Therefore, the target address will be equal to the starting address. And we know the size is four bytes, so I know all the values I want is within these four bytes. And let's say I want the value at index two. Well, it'll be the starting address plus two times four, which is eight. So basically to find the value at this index two, I take the starting address and I jump four and then another four, which is eight. So two times four. Okay. And I know now that at index two, the memory location is over here. And then the size is four. So the value I'm looking for is within these four bytes. Okay. All right. So hopefully you understand why index starts at zero. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date for more C++ tutorials or programming tutorials in general. All right. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.